In this question, we're told that we have a particle P, and it's moving in a straight line with constant acceleration, so along this straight line here. Initially, it's at O, and then we're told after 9 seconds, it's at A, where OA is 18 meters, as shown, and the velocity is 8 meters per second in the direction OA. Okay, so it's going to the right. That's important to know. And we're asked to show that the initial speed is four meters per second. So this is a constant acceleration question, and hence we can apply SUVAT. And I'm going to apply SUVAT from O to A, and I'm going to make to the right positive. So the displacement is 18. V is equal to 8 and T is equal to 9. We're actually asked to find the acceleration in the second part, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this by using the SUVA. I mean, so we could work out the acceleration and then substitute in to find U, but I'm going to go straight away and find the initial speed. We can use S is equal to a half U plus V times T. The SUVA equation, and then you could rearrange to make U the subject or just substitute in the numbers and then solve. So 18 is a half u plus 8 times 9. So I can divide through by 9, which gives me 2 over here, and then times through by 2. So I'm going to get 4 is equal to u plus 8. And therefore u is equal to minus 4. So the initial speed, we ignore the negative for that one, the initial speed is therefore 4 meters per second as was asked. So in part B, I'm going to write it over here. We're asked to find the acceleration of P. It's going to be the same situation with these SUVAT equations or SUVAT variables. We know that U is now minus 4. So even though the speed was 4, we need to work in terms of the velocity in SUVAT. And I can use any one of these SUVAT equations except the one that doesn't involve A. So I'm going to use V is equal to U plus AT. And that means 8 is equal to minus 4 plus 9A. 12 is 9A. A is going to be 12 divided by 9. Divide top and bottom by 3 to give 4 over 3. A is equal to 4 over 3 meters per second squared. Now this is a mechanics question and arguably we should maybe write it just to three significant figures because this is a model, although in the mark scheme it seemed to prefer having it as 4 over 3. But if we round it to three significant figures, which is accepted, then it would be 1.33. So we've got a lot of information on P now. In fact, it has initial velocity of minus 4. So it's actually going to go this way. And then the acceleration is going to mean it stops and then comes back. And after 9 seconds, it's got to here. So part 2 says, um, OK, we've also got B and it's 10 metres away. We need to show that P is never at point B. So it never reaches it. So there's a few ways we can look at this. I'm going to look at it by finding the maximum distance or the max, maximum displacement it goes in this direction. So let me call this point here x, okay, and say that it stops here. So if I can show that x is less than 10 meters, then it means it can never get to b. So this is part two. O to x. And I'm going to say now that to the left is positive. You can, you're allowed to change it around. Still applying SUVAT because it's constant acceleration. So u is now 4. Okay, it was minus 4 when it was in the other direction, but now it's going to be 4. And I'm interested in when it stops. The acceleration is minus 4 over 3. And I want to find S. So I can use V squared is equal to U squared P 
plus 2as to help me do that. This is the equation without t in. Therefore, 0 is going to be 16. 2 times minus 4 over 3 is minus 8 over 3. Of course, you can do all of this with a calculator if you prefer. 8 over 3s is equal to 16. Now I can divide by 8. It's give me 1 third is e s is equal to 2, and then times through by 3. You could alternatively divide by 8 over 3 or times by 3 over 8, which is the same thing. In any case, we're going to get that s is equal to 8. Sorry, to 6. And now we just need to write, a, well, a conclusion, really. This is less than 10. So he never reaches B. Hey, okay, that's pretty comprehensive, I think. I did see in the mark scheme it talked about another way where you would basically assume that S is equal to 10 and then um, try and solve an equation and find out that it has no solution because it can't. I'm not going to get into any more details on that. I think this is a this is a solid method, just finding out how far it's actually gone, rather than just showing there is no solution. It's quite useful to know that, you know, it doesn't actually get that close. In the last part of this question, we've got a second particle and it's bringing out variable acceleration. So now the acceleration is not constant, but it's going to be a function of time, essentially. And we're given the displacement of Q from O. I'm just going to bring the question down here with a bit more space. And we've got a cubic function that describes the variable, well, not the variable acceleration, but the variable displacement. And then we're given some information on the velocity and the acceleration of Q at the point O. And we're told, sorry, we're told actually that the same as they're the same as those of P at O. So that's going to be quite important because remember we were told that the velocity was minus 4 at the start and the acceleration was 4 over 3. That is of course now we're assuming that um, x direction is positive, the positive x direction is positive. Okay, I know I, I, know I swapped it around there and you, you might have not liked that maybe, but you can do it all in reverse. You can make that minus 4 and that 4 over 3. And that's zero and you'll get exactly the same answer. So sometimes it's just a bit advantageous to swap it around, but I could have stuck with that one being positive, like I said. Now I'm just going to add that actually this is V zero and this is A zero. Okay, and we also know that Q reaches the point A when T is equal to six. That means that X six yeah this is a function of time these are functions of time and i'm just substituting in time so i didn't make that clear x six is equal to reaches the point a so 18. now i did wonder it does say it's given that the velocity and acceleration at the point o now we know that p actually has um it moves to the left and then moves back so technically it is at o twice the acceleration is always 4 over 3, but the velocity will be different, in fact. So you just have to be a bit careful. Actually, it turns out if you calculate the time that it would take to get from O to here and then back again, it actually, I think it takes 6 seconds. So there's no way that it must be that the velocity it's talking about is this initial velocity. I'm just trying to clarify that because it made me you know, wonder about it when I did this question. There's two moments when P is at, is at the origin or O, um, but it's talking about the first one. If you think it talks about the second one, then you'll see there's an inconsistency. It, it can't be. So just clarified that. Right, well, we've got X. Let's work out what V is. So V is actually going to be the first derivative of the displacement. So I can just use my rules of differentiation, bring the power down, and minus one from the power. The A just kind of passes through. And this becomes 2BT. Now, can we? what can we do here? Um, oh, sorry, I forgot this plus C. 
Okay, and V0 is therefore simply going to, this is 0, this is 0, it's just going to be C. But it's also equal to minus 4. And therefore, I've worked out one of the values already. Okay, I nearly forgot about it, but I remembered it. And then the acceleration is, you can either see it as the first derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of the displacement. It's worth being aware of those two things. So I'm going to differentiate again. And I'm going to get 6AT plus 2B. So A0 now is going to equal 2B. And it's equal to 4 over 3. Therefore, B is going to be 2 thirds. And we figured out another one. Okay, so I've used both of these conditions. The one I've not used yet is x6 is equal to 18. So before I use that, let's just write down an updated x. So it's going to be at cubed plus bt squared. That's going to be 2 thirds t squared. And then it's plus ct, so it's going to be minus 4t. Okay, so we're nearly there with it. We're actually asked to find the velocity of q at a. So we're going to need to um, we're going to need to work out, okay, we're going to need to work out this a, and then, then we can substitute back into my our velocity over here. All right, so what was it? x6 is equal to 18. So x6 is going to be a times 6 cubed plus 2 thirds times 6 squared minus 4 times 6. And that is equal to 18. And you can use your calculator as much as you want here. Actually, 6 cubed is 216. This one is going to be 24, I think. 36 divided by 3 is 12 times by 2 is 24. I'm not even going to use my calculator. 24. Oh, minus 24. Okay, that's handy because these just cancel out. So A is going to equal 18 over 216. Okay. Let's do that one. 216 divided by 18 is 12. I've done it the wrong way around. Sorry. 18 divided by 216 is therefore 1 over 12. Okay, nice. So x is actually 1 over 12 t cubed plus 2 thirds t squared minus 4 t. But remember, we're actually asked for the velocity of q at a, so I'm going to actually need this function. I could differentiate the whole thing again, but I've already done it. So it's going to be 3 times 1 over 12, which is a quarter. And then 2 times 2 thirds, which is 4 over 3. And then c was minus 4. Remember this, we're interested in the velocity of q at a, and that was when the time is equal to 6. So it's going to be a quarter times 6 squared plus 4 thirds times 6 minus 4. So it's 36, 6 squared, divided by 4 plus 4 over 3 times 6 minus 4. And that gives an answer of 13. So just write 13 meters per second. Okay, and we've completed this question. So well done on your efforts with this. 
um, quite a lot to do in these little bits. You have to figure out, you know, be really careful. Um, Suvat and then some variable acceleration, a good mix and using using different parts. I mean, this this part's quite hard because you have to, I mean, you get some follow through marks, but you have to have got some of the earlier parts correct to then get this part three correct as well. 